13, it's entered. Station keeping. Uh, Can you hear us? Oh, wait, wait. Oh, there you go. You're back. What was the last thing you saw me say? I think it's just cool. I mean, so but the purpose of my writing is always just, I want something cool. And Mars is kind of the next thing that we're all paying attention to. My God. <laughs> Mark Watney is still alive. Woo! We've been to the moon and Mars is the next obvious place for us to go. Venus is closer, but it's hell. The longest a probe has even survived on Venus is the Venera 7 probe sent by the Soviet Union survived about 14 minutes. Yeah. And that's the record. <laughs> I mean, Venus is hell. In your face, Neil Armstrong. Uh, you're talking about uh, Elon Musk's vision of having a million people on Mars. But during the evacuation. Huh. Well, probably wherever though the highest concentration of water is. Before you could ever build a city on Mars, you'd want to send a whole bunch more probes. Mars does not have a single global climate, just like Earth doesn't. You know, we have the Sahara and we have the Amazon basin. Well, Mars will also have deserts and areas of higher uh, concentrations of water. And the water, that, the, that access to hydrogen really, is the main thing that's gonna drive it. I don't know if you'd want to put a city at the pole. There's so much water now we know, thanks to Curiosity. For instance, in Gale Crater, we know that for every cubic meter of Martian soil, there's about 35 liters of water. You don't want to end up somewhere where you have to work hard to get at the hydrogen. The most critical thing is the ability to grow the pressure vessel. So you have like a city, you have a large whatever pressure vessel, you need to be able to purely with resources found on Mars, make more of them. They could be connected through tunnels or, I've seen a whole bunch of interesting ones. I saw one that's this really cool concept where it's just basically like this, this machine that can take and compact Martian soil and it goes in, in a spiral outward. Have you seen that one? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that design I think is really cool because it just it, it can just keep spiraling out indefinitely as long as you keep feeding it materials. And then you could connect those tunnels, the ones in the center, you could take those spirals and just kind of connect them and have like a solid thing that gets bigger and bigger. And you partition it and stuff so that one breach doesn't kill everybody. But ultimately, all you really need is smelting. You need the ability to smelt. Now, uh, we think of a Mars colony as being Earth independent. It doesn't have to be completely Earth independent. It just has to be mostly Earth independent. And it would be okay, I think, to rely on the occasional restocking of nuclear fuel for a reactor. And that is just, a reactor is just such a good way of having a lot of energy in a small place. If your Martian city is powered by a reactor, then you have enough power to just take Martian regolith and smelt it the metals out of it. Now you've got metals. Then you do all the things you, you do with metals. You, you make your pressure vessels, you do whatever you like. Uh, I always envisioned having a multi-hulled system. So you have a hull full of holding an atmosphere and then um, a meter of blank space and then another hull that is also capable of holding an atmosphere. So either one of these holes works. I think what really brought him there was uh, about 10 years of me writing short fiction earlier that had slowly accumulated regular readers. So I just, I already had regular readers and they were kind of science-minded dorks like me. <laughs> and I think perhaps like you, I, 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 I sense you guys, you guys might be science-minded science dorks. dorks. Yeah, yeah, we are. I mean, look at our uh, Star Trek. I'm thinking the Star Trek uniforms is sort of a dead giveaway. Thanks for you. Except that guy. Yeah, that this guy. guy. He's no Star Trek uniform. I'm, I'm the bad guy here. He's, He's from, from the dark, dark side. No, no, no. no. You're look, look, look at the colors of these shirts. You are the survivor. <laughs> and we have another survivor. Ta-da! There you go. Fantastic. I like how his ears are outside of his helmet. That's very helpful. <laughs> we left him behind. Let's go get our boy. 
This is something NASA rejected. So we're talking mutiny. And if we mess up the supply rendezvous, we die. If we mess up the Earth gravity assist, we die.